Five years after the Vietnam War ended, information came out about U.S. POWs being held in Laos. A plan was put together, and Special Operations Forces prepared to go in. This kind of sounds like the story of legendary Green Beret John Rambo, but the operators here didn't have explosive arrows, and the ending to this true story is just a little bit different. By 1973, the U.S. listed over 2,600 American service members as unaccounted for in the war, with estimates that roughly half of those were being held as prisoners. It's a hard number to dial in. The majority of those were downed pilots or air crews over North Vietnam, so it wasn't always clear if the airmen had perished in the crash or were captured by enemy forces. During Operation Homecoming, the United States was able to negotiate the release of 591 prisoners. A big win, but that added to the speculation that a number of POWs remained either in North Vietnam or Laos. I mean, roughly 600 out of 2,600? You can see why people were a little surprised at how few POWs were actually coming home. Maybe North Vietnam was being sincere. They'd returned all prisoners home as stated, and U.S. estimates were just way too high. Maybe they were holding on to others as some sort of leverage. Or maybe there were prison camps in neighboring Laos and Cambodia that were not included in this transfer. Whatever the case, quite a few Americans were convinced that prisoners remained behind and that our government had essentially forgotten about them, leaving them to suffer and die while families forever wondered about the fate of their loved ones. Then in 1980, information began to materialize around American prisoners being held in a small camp in Laos. The U.S. had lost planes over Laos during the war, so there had always been the thought that POWs could be held in that country rather than transferred to North Vietnam. There were a few sources adding to this discovery. Human intelligence on the ground, including a source considered very reliable, had relayed that 30 U.S. POWs were in a work party just outside of town in central Laos. This was on top of multiple yet unverified reports since the war ended that Caucasian prisoners had been spotted by locals in prison gangs all across the country. The next piece of the puzzle came from a Thai signals intelligence group who had picked up communications about the movement of American POWs from one camp to another. This was enough for Vice Admiral Jerry Tuttle, the man leading the POW recovery effort for the Defense Intelligence Agency, to further investigate. And what he found is controversial to this day. Tuttle shifted satellites and spy planes overhead while his analysts began dissecting imagery trying to find what could be POW camps. And before long, they found what they were looking for. A fortress-like compound just outside of Namarath with stockade walls and guard towers. It was clearly a prison and matched the general location put together by the human and signals intelligence teams. Additionally, analysts found the letter K and number 52 drawn out in crop fields nearby, with each character measuring roughly 9 feet long by 6 feet wide. The letter K was used in the Vietnam War as a pilot distress signal alerting aircraft overhead of the presence of a downed crew. The 52 was a little more debatable. Some argued that it was to display that the crew of a B-52 bomber was being held at that location, and others thought it might signify the total number of prisoners in that camp. So the location was confirmed, at least as much as could be from satellite imagery. But this operation would require deep infiltration in enemy territory. The U.S. had to be absolutely sure before they gave the green light. Selected for this mission, dubbed Operation Pocket Change, was the relatively new Delta Force. Technically, the Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, the organization was stood up in 1977, designed to be the Army's elite counterterrorism unit. Delta would operate under the Joint Special Operations Command, another recently created organization put together in the aftermath of the failed hostage rescue mission known as Operation Eagle Claw. Based on satellite imagery, the Delta team put together tabletop models and began planning their mission. Recognizing just how precise every aspect of this operation would have to be, they then went on to build a full-scale mock-up and refine every aspect down to the smallest detail. The mock-up was put together on the island of Tinian in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, where nobody would accidentally stumble across it and give away this top-secret mission. The plan was to have around 40 operators on the newly fielded MH6 Littlebirds land right up against the camp, which was out in the middle of the jungle, grab the prisoners, and be out of there before the Laotian government had any idea what had happened. But as dialed in as those operators were, decision makers needed confirmation that U.S. POWs were actually at that location. I mean, this was a military raid into a sovereign nation that could turn into a significant battle between the two forces. Satellite imagery just wasn't enough. For that, small recon teams would have to be sent into Laos to observe the camp themselves, and their reports would surprise everyone. There was some heated debate between CIA and JSOC on who would actually conduct this recon. Eventually, CIA won out by arguing that their local assets 
were less likely to be detected than Caucasian American soldiers, and if those assets were caught, the U.S. could still maintain deniability. And as all of this was playing out, threats to the secrecy of the mission began to emerge. After briefing the Congressional POW Task Force, the Pentagon got news that a handful of newspapers had been informed about the operation and were planning to run a story. The military was able to convince those reporters to hold until the operation was complete, but they didn't have much time. News of this secret raid could now come out at any time, forcing the cancellation of the mission, potentially the last operation to bring these American POWs home. Now, the recon to check out the camp proved a total disaster. The team wasn't trained for this type of work, and the 40-mile trip to the camp and back took more than a month, with one team member accidentally shooting himself and another getting sick and having to be evacuated mid-mission. And once that team safely returned to friendly territory, CIA briefed the Pentagon that they had observed the camp for two days, noting around 160 total prisoners, but none were Caucasian. Then after stalling reporters for weeks now, the Pentagon finally gave in. And on May 20th, 1981, news came out that the military was planning a secret raid into Laos. Without the element of surprise, the operation was closed down, and any hope of finding and rescuing a few more POWs was lost. The issue wasn't settled, though. While CIA says their assets observed the camp for two days, it eventually came out that they were only on site for two hours, where they captured blurry photographs from 500 yards away and didn't ever gain visual of the prisoners housed inside an inner complex. Critics argue that the information they gathered was far from disproving the presence of American POWs and was instead used as a way to veto the risky operation. So rather than Delta operators kicking in doors and pulling out dozens of POWs, the American public was left with a story of what if, and another reminder of the many American service members that remained unaccounted for. Since the end of the war, through some incredible efforts by groups such as the Defense POW and MIA Accounting Agency, 1,062 once missing service members are now accounted for. Over a thousand families brought to some degree of closure after years or even decades wondering about their loved ones. However, that still leaves nearly 1,600 Americans unaccounted for across Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. And at this point, nearly 50 years later, while efforts are still ongoing with cooperation between all countries, most are considered non-recoverable. In 2000, the suspected prison site for Operation Pocket Change was opened up to American officials, but they were rushed through the compound, not allowed to take pictures, and only got to speak with a few locals who said they never saw American POWs. Additionally, a Defense Intelligence Agency assessment 20 years after the war stated that there were 27 Americans known to have been captured in Laos during the conflict. 20 returned home alive, four are known to have died in captivity, two are believed to have died in captivity, and one disappeared during an escape attempt. So looking back on Operation Pocket Change, hopefully the initial CIA assessment and subsequent DIA analysis were correct, and there were no Americans being held in the camp who could have been rescued if this mission had gone ahead.